Austin Payton with Recluse Motorsports. We're here at Dirt Rider Magazine today. We're gonna to be installing a Corey XP 3.0 into their project bike, Honda CRF 450R 2007 model. Um, this is gonna be the last piece of the build. We're basically gonna be throwing this auto clutch in and what we're gonna be looking to get out of the auto clutch is those low traction situations, rocks, gnarly conditions where the auto clutch really shines. You can focus on the trail, focus on where you're going with the bike and not so much on using the clutch lever. Also the same thing is with the Core XP product, you can still use the lever like normal. So you don't have to change your riding style. So when they're testing this bike out, no one's gonna have to change anything. All they're gonna have is gains and performance in areas where they wouldn't have that advantage. So I'm gonna be installing it for you today. Show you how easy it really is. You can do it in your own garage and uh, let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna lay your bike on the side and you're gonna start off by pushing down on the caliper. Basically what we're gonna do is take all the pressure out of it so we can move the brake pedal out of the way. So by pushing on the caliper, it's gonna relieve the brake pedal. We can go ahead and throw in a screwdriver or a socket to keep that out of our way of our clutch system. Next step is to remove the clutch cover. So we'll take off the clutch cover bolts. Next step is to pull out the pressure plate bolts and then we're gonna remove the OEM clutch componentry clutch pack. So to remove the OEM center clutch nut, uh, we're gonna use a chisel and a hammer to basically knock this bend tab washer down um, so we can remove the center clutch nut. To remove the center clutch nut, you can either use an impact gun or if you have a clutch holding tool, you can also use a breaker bar um, and that clutch holding tool to remove the center clutch nut. Uh, I'm just going to use an impact here and rattle it off. Usually put it into gear too, it'll keep it from spinning. We'll lock it up in the transmission. Um, now that the center clutch nut's removed, we can actually pull the whole center clutch out. One thing that's important on this step is to make sure that this piece that sticks to the back of here remains in place. So the first part of the Recluse Auto Clutch that we'll install is the center clutch hub. So we'll go ahead, make sure that this washer again is in place, and we'll go ahead and set the center clutch hub down on the splines. And then in, included in your kit is a new lock tab washer and a center clutch nut. You gotta use both of these kits supplied by Recluse. So go ahead and slide that down and then start our center clutch nut. The next step is to torque the center clutch nut to 50 foot pounds. There's two ways to do it. Recluse offers a clutch holding tool. If you don't have the clutch holding tool, um, you can actually use the rear brake and hold the rear brake. You usually need a buddy to hold, help you hold the rear wheel um, and you can also torque it. It's really important that you torque the center clutch nut and don't use an impact. If you over tighten the center clutch nut, the clutch will not function properly. What happens is it'll bind and cause dragging um, and stalling possibly too. So make sure that you're actually using 50 foot pounds of torque. So use a pair of channel lock pliers and basically we're just gonna bend these tabs up against the nut after setting the torque to lock it into place. Next step is to install the OEM throwout. So we'll take this throwout piece out of the OEM clutch and we're gonna go ahead and reuse it here in the main shaft. After that's done, take our clutch pack that came out of the OEM clutch. I'm gonna go ahead and separate the steels and fibers. We're gonna reuse our fiber plates. We'll be using seven of our OEM fibers with the Recluse supplied steel for um, drive plates. So we're gonna reuse seven of the OEM fiber plates. We we'll actually have one OEM fiber plate left over that came out of your stock clutch. Um, that will be replaced with the EXP that's gonna actually count as a fiber. So next we're gonna install the Recluse drive plates. Um, we're gonna alternate drive plates and frictions. With the Recluse systems, we actually start with the steel. On the 450 models, there's one steel that's actually a little bit thinner. It's a 40 thou steel. We're gonna start with that plate. Um, smaller bikes, so 250F, stuff like that, actually all the drive plates are the same size. Make sure you check with your manual. So on this CR450, um, first plate in is going to be the thinner steel. After your first steel, you go with a fiber, and we're going to go fiber, fiber steel, fiber steel, so until we end with a steel. 
Other thing I'd like to point out, these are laser cut, so there's not an up or a down. The drive plates are the same either way. After the uh, clutch pack is installed, next piece that goes in is actually the auto disc, the EXP. Um, you want to go ahead and oil it a little bit in whatever oil you're going to be using with the system. Um, when it's brand new, just want to make sure you oil it so that it works properly um, once you first fire the bike up. It'll sit right at the top of the clutch pack, indexing just like a friction. It will hang out of the basket just a little bit, so don't be alarmed. That's normal for the auto clutch um, Core EXP system. Next step we'll be installing our pressure plate. The pressure plate has a lining plate on the back side, so you want to make sure that you line up the indexing ears on the bottom side of the pressure plate. Hold it with both fingers, so we'll go ahead and flip it over, and just set it down, index it on the center clutch, just like that. After the pressure plate's installed, we'll install our pressure plate springs. Um, it's kind of a three-piece system. We'll use a collar, uh, bolt and then the spring. So let's go ahead and index just like that all the way around. So I'm just tightening these down to set them into place and then I'll go back through and I'll torque these. So you make sure you go nice and light, just going snug right now. I'm trying not to tire my fingers out too much, just go using the power tool. We're going to torque these to nine foot pounds. Go ahead and use it, tighten them down in a star pattern. The next step we'll be using two Allens, a four millimeter and a five millimeter. We're gonna make sure that the set screws are loose and just make sure that they're showing a little bit of thread. Our adjuster will be nice and loose and we'll be setting our adjustment. So what we're gonna feel for is there's a mark on this adjuster and then there's marks all the way around the pressure plate for reference. We're gonna go down until we feel snug contact. And basically what's happening is this pressure plate adjuster is bottoming out on our center clutch nut. Once we find a spot that feels like a solid starting point, which is what Recluse calls it for our adjustment, we'll just go ahead and double check our lever to make sure that we have some free play in the lever. So what we're checking for is to make sure that our cable slack isn't gone and tight against the perch. So like right now we're actually tight against the perch so I need to adjust some slack into the cable. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and back this off and give us some more slack. You may have to also adjust the inline adjuster if you can't get any slack. So now I got some slack in that cable. We'll go double check, make sure my starting point hasn't changed. What we're trying to keep from happening is lifting off the throw out. Wanna make sure we're lifting off the center clutch nut and not off the throw out. If we're lifting off the throw out, this will be tight. Now that we got enough free play in the lever, we're gonna double check, make sure our starting point's still the same. It is, so we're good to go to make our adjustment. From our starting point, which is one mark before three, we're gonna go one full turn and three marks. So go down here and get a little more leverage on the adjuster. You're gonna have some resistance. There's one full turn, we're gonna go three small tick marks. One, two, three. So that's our setting. After we set that using our four millimeter, we're gonna go ahead and lock in our set screws. Now these are tapered pipe plugs, so once they get down to about flush with the, the surface here on the adjuster, they'll be locking the adjuster into place. You wanna make sure that you're not over tightening these. The torque on these is 50, or excuse me, 40 inch pounds. You can either reuse the OEM gasket in the Recluse clutch cover, which we did here at a brand new OEM gasket, or Recluse, we actually supply a cut to fit gasket. Uh, if your gasket's toast when you take it apart, you can actually use this piece and cut it to fit in this gasket. As you notice, this pressure plate is very open. So is the back side of the clutch. You can actually see all the way through this clutch system to the basket. The design in that is we're actually scooping up oil with the pressure plate. It's putting it into the clutch system. On the back side, there's actually a dam system. So any oil that's caught by this clutch system is actually being thrown through the clutch pack. So we're getting not only the auto clutch function, but we're getting more durability because our clutch is going to be running in a lower temperature. And then overall, these all these features actually make it really lightweight. So weight-wise, we're still within a couple 
percentile even with the auto function of the OEM clutch system. Right, last piece is to install the recluse clutch cover. Let's go ahead and slide it down. Just like that. Then we'll reuse the OEM clutch cover bolts and make sure that we torque these down to the OEM spec. All right, we're done with our clutch install. So the last piece of the clutch install is basically double check your install gap. Uh, we want to make sure it's adjusted properly. How we're going to do that is we're going to fire this bike up and in neutral, pulling the slack out of the clutch lever so that you have all the tension out and then revving the motorcycle to about mid throttle. The lever should move about an eighth of an inch and that's what we call a free play gain. That'll let you know that the clutch is ad adjusted properly. If uh, you're not getting that movement up here at the lever, uh, you may need to reset your adjustment. Uh, just a good way to double check, make sure that we did set it to one full turn and three marks inside the motor. Alright, so she's good to go. The adjustment's set perfectly. We're ready to go out there and tear it up.